Hello there, welcome to Ice Garage. Today I'm into uh, the uh, scooter again, the NSC 50, the Honda. Uh, it might look like the one that I made a service on some months ago, but it's uh, the same kind of bike, but it's not the same bike. Uh, the other one was bought quite expensively, it was almost new, and my daughter should only uh, have her used it for, t I should say, practicing, learning how to drive and uh, to ride and then to get her license and, and so on. And then she she's off in the uh, Suzuki X90, I thought. But uh, she really enjoyed uh, riding the moped or this scooter. So uh, I bought another one, exactly the same, but with a bit more mileage. It's a bit more warm. Uh, it was half the price. Uh, it has some small scratches here and there, but um, in general it looks quite decent. But um, I've just found out that, well, she was complaining a bit. Ah, oh, it doesn't really make 45 km per hour. It makes 42. And one reason could be the belt. This belt is, I measured, this is the old one, even if it's a new bag. Um, the new one is here. Um, just below 18 millimeters. And I called Honda, a Honda workshop or a Honda mechanic. And uh, he said that mm, it shouldn't be is narrower than 18 millimeters, then it's due. So it's due. And I bought a new one. Um, there are, of course, other. Um, other belts to uh, to buy Malossi, Polini and so on, but I choose to buy the original one. It's yeah, 10 or 20 euros more expensive, but I don't mind. It's, as you can see, everything is in pieces here. And I will try to get everything back again, which, uh, well, let's see how it goes. <laughs> to get this far, I've taken uh, off this cover. Well, at first, there's this little plastic thing that leads air into this transmission cover um, but I will I will show you all the way until everything is done again now at this point in time where I have I have squeezed like this I have pushed this this uh, there's a spring here so this uh, rear end of the transmission is just spring loaded and as the variator uh, compresses itself when the weights inside here move and pushes this wheel that way so it gets narrower then this one climbs with a larger diameter and the force of this kind of forces the uh, these discs to go apart instead and there's a spring here that pushes them back when uh, the speed slows down and here's also the cluster clutch you can see uh, three small um, shoes or whatever you should call it now this thing should of course go back onto this shaft and I've covered it because uh, it's a bearing surface or several bearing surface maybe but the main one is in there and there is a now one shouldn't put grease on these of course so there is a bearing roller bearing in there and one doesn't want to get a single little gram of dirt in there then you will ruin the, the bearing um, so it looks reasonably greased but I've been wiping off a bit also there so I will just put on a slight amount of grease on it bearing grease high load even should, should be okay just a little bit on the shaft, nothing much. And there's another surface in the middle that I don't really know if it's a bearing surface or not. And then we've got the end, I don't know, let's see. Now, um, as you can see, I'm trying to hold this together so it will reach over here before, because if you just put it over this wheel when they are down like that, then you, I will not reach the, that area. So let me see now if this will work or not. It's 
it is sufficient to get it in place because you have to be able to one has to be able to get this thing all the way in uh, or yeah to really see it here and I don't know if this is sufficient or not I will try so this is some kind of combined variator disc starter motor cogwheel and here's a little fan because this is kind of ventilated so all the clutch dust that you and also belt dust that develops gets ventilate, ventilated out of this thing how does this feel this will work it seats properly if it doesn't then uh, let me double check yeah this one really needs to get into its splines here but this feels solid doesn't feel soft okay <clears throat> so then it's the clutch bell could i call it this oops now i lost something a washer okay ah there's a bearing surface also here And then there's a little washer or something, almost like a little tube, and it's not symmetrical. So it has to sit with its larger diameter inwards. How do you keep things still here? Um, everything rotates. I mean, here, this rotates the rear wheel. Nothing stops it. Okay, could I brake maybe? Oh, maybe. Um, maybe braking is a way. Yeah, but you're loading up the transmission now. Um, here, I uh, consulted the Honda mechanic and he said, yeah, you can just use an air, air gun or air wrench that just knocks the uh, knocks the nut out of position. Okay, fine. I could use that. Uh, I've seen some other warnings on other in other areas or on other mopeds that you might damage something in the in the engine if you use that. Maybe that depends on how hard it hits or something. Um, so I decided to make a little lock tool instead, like this. I just uh, you know. Put a piece of paper there and put a pen in, in, on the paper and you know, make a little thing. So let me see now. I will try to lock it. There is then a 17 millimeter socket. Bit okay, there we go. That's that. It spins well. Then I let me think now. That one, so <laughs> uh, to get this tool to stand still, I made a weird tool. I made this thing. There we go. Here it is. So then that's 19. So it's just two M12 bolts that I put some shrink tube over on the back side and, and um, attached with some nuts and so on. Yes. There we go. So that one is in place. Ah well, maybe you're curious. Um, two M12 bolts protruding a bit. And this one, how wide is that one? <laughs> um, 33-34 millimeters of wood and I could hear when I was 
disengaging the knot that this one was almost cracking, so nothing thinner than this, I would say. Ah, well. Now let's cut this thing away. There we go. Now, will this thing rotate properly? I hope so. Tightened, tightened. Um, what else then? Old belt will not be used anymore. I noted. Well, as you can see, the gasket is a bit damaged. Why is there a gasket there? Well, it's of course not so good if there's water seeping down there and the gasket on this cover is partly here. I have not bothered to buy a new one, but I think that someone has been playing around there in the past, uh, trying to get it in position without a gasket, because someone has damaged the gasket, I think. I don't know what they've been doing here, maybe some teenagers curious on how to get things uh, <laughs> going quicker, maybe they've had a high speed variator on this bike in the past, who knows. Anyhow, someone has forgotten or ignored the gasket and one can see small small scratch marks on the inside here. Here you can see. So the gasket really should be there not just to seal but also to keep it in the right uh, position. It's partly loose in some areas and I do not have a new one so I will try to put some sealant on there instead. So a bit of Engine sealant. I will uh, call that. Universal sealing, 300 degrees Celsius or something, right? I think this one should be okay. I will just put that where, where there are small damages to the to the current gasket. It might also work as a bit of a glue or something. And where else? All the pieces are on that part. So over at the rear, there are some damages also here. Yes. Right. At every little damage, there is now a, a um, bit of extra sealant, then this is a shaft that goes into a bearing there, but it's of course good to check that there's no debris on that one also, and that it's, I don't know, seems to need a bit of lubrication, shouldn't need, shouldn't need that, but I know. Now there should of course be guiding cylinders here, and they are still in place, keep that one down a bit, and this one, the starter, and it's important to make sure that the starter isn't out of position also. There we go. Now it's just a lot of small screws to install. There's the wrench. 8mm socket for all these ones. One is slight, well that one is long of course, but there's one that's a bit longer and I put an extra washer here because it looked, looked like it needed that. Um, and that one goes here where there's this cable, where this cable attaches, or this holder for the cable is. So, let's see. Good. Then it's just work. I've added a little bit of lubrication to all these. They were a bit hard to detach. Uh, looks like they or feels, felt like they were kind of getting almost stuck by corrosion or oxidation or something like that. Yeah, it's not so nice to snap screw. There we go, then just 
tightening them all a bit at a time, I would say, and the crosswise, I think I would recommend going from the inside and out. And then again, to the right torque, <laughs> it's they are not all that big, but that feels right. Fine. Then it's this little air cover. I've already cleaned it and so on. So it goes. Is there something that can go wrong? No. It's a bit of a tight fit, but it goes in there. There we go. The lower one was without metal cylinders so I'm, or sleeves, so I'm a bit more careful with that one. But that one you can tighten really hard. All right, well, this should be uh, it, I hope. Um, let's see if it goes. Okay, here we are, ready at the long straight. My daughter will uh, go for a, for a drive with the new uh, drive belt on it. So let's see how it goes. All right, 46 kilometers per hour, uh, four kilometers quicker than with the old belt. We are very happy. <laughs> Thanks, that's all from Moriscarros today. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>